Hey folks, so now that we've been through optimization from start to finish, there are a couple of complications that we need to talk about. So today we're going to talk about two of those complications. One of them is what happens when a vertex, one of the corners of your polygon of constraints, is a decimal. And luckily, that's a complication that's fairly easy to resolve. So we'll talk about that one first. The second one that we'll talk about today is what happens if we have a dotted line rather than a solid line, right? So, so far, all of our optimization questions have had solid lines, which means we've either had greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And today we're going to introduce kind of what happens if we have a dotted line. So just greater than or just less than. How do we work with that? So I am in your workbook on page 48. So let's do this example together. And here we go. We're given the polygon of constraints already. So for this question, we don't have to write the inequalities. We don't have to graph them. They're already graphed for us, which is fantastic. And in fact, the polygon, the shape, is already shaded for us. So we know that the shape that we're interested in is right here. It's this shaded area, right? And so there are three corners. There's a corner here. Let's call that A. There's a corner here, let's call that B, and there's a corner here, let's call that C, right? And last time, if we had a vertex that was a decimal, we used algebra to kind of sort it out. And for a lot of questions, we're still going to do that to make sure that it is, in fact, a decimal. However, for this question, we aren't given the equations of these lines, so there's not much we can do other than move each of these points to integers, so to a whole number. And here's the reason we're going to do that, right? Remember, we're talking about, like, things. So, you know, when we had the example of bags, a bag with marbles in it, you know, we don't really have half of a marble or three quarters of a marble. And the same with this example, a school is holding a car wash. You know, it doesn't make sense that we're going to wash half of a car, right? Or, you know, a third of a truck or something. So we're always talking about whole numbers. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of these three corners, we're going to pick new corners that are in our polygon. So in the shaded area or... Um, on a solid line. So let's take a look at A first. A is here, right? Here's our A. And we need to move it because it's a decimal, right? X is somewhere between 1 and 2. Y is somewhere between 4 and 5. And it, it, we have to move it inside our polygon. So the only way we can move X is we, have to, we can't move it to 1 because if we move it to 1, we're not in our polygon of constraints anymore. So we have to move it to 2. And then let's move it up a little bit as well. So if we move it to this new point, right, it's in our polygon. It's really close to the original vertex. And so let's make a note of what that is, right? Just like we always set up our tables, A now, X is 2, and Y is 5. So let's call this 2, 5. Now we're going to do the same thing with B. It's here, it's a decimal, Well, we need to move it to the closest integers, the closest whole numbers, and we want to look where, you know, things cross really nicely. So let's move it right here. And if we move B to this new orange dot, X is 4 and Y is 11. And we're going to do the same thing with C. We need to move it to the closest integers. So if we moved it up to 9, to x being 9, that would be off our graph and not in our polygon. So we have to move it inside, which means it's going to move back to x is 8. And then, you know, this point right here is awfully close. So 8, 7 is really close. If we moved it to, you know, x is 8, y is 6, that wouldn't be in our polygon anymore. So we only get to move it inside, either on a line or inside the shaded area. So C then is going to become 8, 7. And some of this is kind of at your discretion, picking the closest points. Although, you know, it, it does need to be reasonable. For all of these, there isn't really another better option. Sometimes there'll be two that are kind of equally good, and that's fine. 
Well, now that we have the corners, we can finish up our optimization question, right? A school is holding a car wash, it charges $5 to wash each car, which is X, and $8 to wash each truck, which is Y. The students can only wash a limited number of vehicles per hour. The polygon of constraints is shown in the graph below. And so we want the maximum we want the maximum value the students can earn. So our target objective is to maximize uh, value. Our optimizing function Well, value, how do we decide the value? It's $5 for every car, so 5x, plus $8 for every truck. So we'll take a look at A. Value is 5 times x, well, x is 2, plus 8 times y, and y is 5. So for point A, 5 times 2 is 10, 8 times 5 is 40, so we get $50. Let's do the same thing for B. Value is 5 times x, which is 4 for point B, times 8, or sorry, plus 8 times y, which is 11. 5 times 4 is 20. 8 times 11 is 88. So our value for B is 108. And for C, our value is 5 times X, which is 8, plus 8 times Y, which is 7. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 8 times 7 is 56. So the value is 96. And so what we need to do is pick the biggest one because we want to maximize, we want the biggest. So the biggest one is $108. So the maximum value is $108. So if we have corners that are on decimals, we just move them to the closest whole numbers and calculate as if that was the spot. The next thing we need to do is to take a look at what happens with dotted lines. So that will be our next example. So the next complication that we need to look at is dotted lines, right? Remember, we have solid lines if our inequality is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, right? If it has this little underline in either of the inequalities. And think back to the very beginning when we were first starting to talk about graphing several lines on one graph. We talked about if we have just greater than or just less than, then we get a dotted line. And then we didn't really use that too much. And so now we have to come back to that. So when we have dotted lines, it would be pretty tempting to solve dotted lines the same way we did with decimals. It's just ignore that corner and move the corner to the closest point that's not on a dotted line, that's still a whole number. But we can't quite do that. And the problem is, if we do it that way, we'll ignore some ties that may emerge and we won't be able to figure out that they were actually ties. So we'll end up with incorrect solutions. And we'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow when we start talking about ties. But for now, just know decimals, move them to the closest corner. Dotted lines, we can't. We're going to solve it as if it was a solid line first, and then think about the fact that it's a dotted line. So here we go. Here's our example. We're on page 50 now. We skipped over page 49. That's a practice question that you can try a little bit later. So the example on, on page 50 is a coffee shop sells tea and coffee. The number of teas, which is going to be x, and coffees, y, sold each hour, is given by the polygon of constraints below. So again, all of the lines are already graphed for us. And this gray shape is our, our polygon of constraints. 
If the coffee shop earns a profit of 75 cents for every tea and a dollar for each coffee, how many teas and coffees must the shop sell in order to earn the maximum profit? Well, if this dotted line were a solid line, we would put a dot at each corner, we would label the corners and solve. So let's do that. Let's call this A, B, C, and D. And let's get a nice table going where we'll put the names of our vertices, the X and the Y, and then the profit for each one. So let's see, point A. We need the X and the Y for point A. Well, X is five, Y is six. So A is the point five comma six. B, X is also five, and this time Y is nine. For point C, X is now seven, and Y is also seven. And for point D, X is six and Y is also six. So let's see, our target objective is to maximize the profit. So let's just make a note of that. All right, so it just means we want the biggest profit. So we need our optimizing function. Right, something that lets us calculate what the profit is. So profit is 75 cents for each T, so 0 0.75 times X plus a dollar times Y for each coffee. So let's take a look at each point. So for point A, and just a reminder, point A is 5, 6, right? X and Y, 5 and 6. So the profit is 0 0.75 times X, which is five, plus one times Y, which is six. And if we do those calculations, 0 0.75 times five is 3.75. One times six is six. And if we add those together, the profit is 9.75 for point A. For point B, X is five, Y is nine. So our profit is 0 0.75 times X, five, plus one times Y, nine. 0 0.75 times five, 3.75. One times nine is nine. So we get 12.75. C is the point seven seven. So profit is 0 0.75 times seven plus one times seven. And 0 0.75 times seven is 5.25. One times seven is seven. So this is 12.25. And then for D, D is the 0.66, remember? So profit is 0 0.75 times 6 plus 1 times 6. And 0 0.75 times 6 is 4.5. 1 times 6 is 6. And we add them together, we get 10.5. So... What we have to do now is find the maximum profit. And the maximum profit is 12.75. And so if, if all of our lines were solid, that'd be great. We know the maximum profit, which means we know we would need five teas and nine coffees to get the maximum profit. Here's the problem though, point B, right? Here's B. This point here is on a dotted line, which means it cannot be the answer. So what we have to do instead is just like with decimals, now we're going to find the closest point to B that's not on a dotted line. So it could be inside our polygon of constraints or it could be on a solid line. 
So really the two options, to the two closest points to B would be either right here or right here. And the second one that I drew is still on a dotted line. So that doesn't help us at all. So our new point is going to be this purple one here and let's call that B2. B1 was our maximum, but it can't be. So let's get rid of it. Now let's calculate B2. We've moved B to B2. The X is still five and the Y is now eight. So let's calculate our new profit for five, eight. 0 0.75 times X, which is five, plus one times Y, which is eight. 0 0.75 times five, 3.75. One times eight is eight, which is 11.75. And so now what we're going to do is find our new maximum, right? We've changed B that's not right. We've changed B to B2. So now let's compare all of them. $9.75, $12.25, $10.50, or $11.75. Well, our new maximum is $12.25. So let's go back up and let's take a look. Well, that's C. And unfortunately, C is on a dotted line too. And we have a couple of choices to where to move C. We could either move C here, right? We're just looking for the closest integers, the closest whole numbers. We could move C inside and that'd be okay. Or we could move C to D. Well, moving C to D doesn't really do much, right? Because we already know the profit for D. So let's not do that one. And if we move it to this top one, it's on a dotted line. So we can't do that. So C2 is now actually inside our polygon and that's okay. It's allowed to be. And so now we have to calculate the profit at our new point C2. X is six, Y is seven. And so for C2, we have six, seven. Our profit is 0 0.75 times X, which is six, plus one times Y, which is seven. 0 0.75 times six is 4.5. One times seven is seven, which gives us $11.50. And so now we've moved C to become C2. And now let's pick the point that's the biggest. We don't have any left on dotted lines, so we must be done. We have 9.75, $10.50, $11.75, and $11.50. Our maximum is $11.75. And it's not on a dotted line, so we can go ahead and answer our question now. That's our maximum profit. And let's see, what does the question ask? How many teas and coffees must the shop sell to earn the maximum profit? So the shop must sell. Teas are X, so five teas. And coffees are Y, eight coffees. And let's see, we're talking about per hour. So per hour to earn the maximum profit. So it's gonna be really tempting to move B to B2 and C to C2 before doing any of the calculations. And in this question, it would have been okay. The problem is once we start talking about ties, which we'll do tomorrow, it won't be okay anymore. We can't do that to start with. We really do have to do this in a couple of steps like we saw here. So for the rest of class today, what I would like you to do is the practice question on page 49, dealing with decimals, and the practice question on page 51, dealing with dotted lines. You can see another dotted line here. 
And then any of the exam style practice questions that you hadn't finished from the other day. So starting on page 56, you still cannot answer question three. So for now, skip three. We'll do that after we've talked about ties, but you should be able to answer all of the other questions. So I will see you tomorrow and I hope you have a great day.